Welcome back to our Avalanche Awareness Series. In the last video, we looked at obvious warning signs and how to make snowpack observations. In this video, we'll cover ways to minimize risk in avalanche terrain. First of all, you need to be able to recognize this type of terrain, understand where the danger is coming from, and determine your position relative to the danger. Then you have to work out the safest way to move your group through that terrain. So Peter, first up, how do you recognize avalanche terrain? Avalanche terrain is all about angle. If it's not steep enough, it won't avalanche. Slab avalanches occur most often on 30 to 45 degrees. However, in certain snowpack conditions, even 25 degrees can be dangerous. Being able to guess the angle is great. You can determine it off a map before you go. When you get there, you can eyeball it. I like to guess first, measure second. A good tool for that is an inclinometer. You can measure the slope angle on the way up or across and figure out if you're gonna be in a safe area or not. Likewise, knowing when you're in a run out of something above you is equally as important as being on the terrain. So for that, for instance, I'm measuring up here and it's 15 degrees above us to the ridge, we're safe, anything less than 20. And you're talking of danger, how do you recognize the danger, the current danger that you're in? Well, the current danger is all about aspect and elevation to the danger at the time, what type of avalanche you're dealing with. Aspect and elevation is given to you on the bulletin of where the danger is expected and where it's not, more importantly. And we want to position ourselves uh, in a place of safety, but without the proper tools, it's hard to tell. So we can use a altimeter to figure out the elevation. We can use our compass to figure out the aspect. This is one of the things that kind of inspired us to create the avalanche risk tool in FATMAP, was that people go on avalanche courses and they can recite things like wind loading, faceted crystals, but actually <laughs> being able to translate that to making real life practical decisions in the terrain, that what we found is often that, that people didn't have the tools to do that. If I know that the avalanche risk is three, then I should make sure I avoid the terrain that is shaded this color on fat map. So we wanted to create something that allows people to really truly understand, if I know the avalanche risk, where is it reasonable to travel? There's no guarantee of safety, but it does allow you to make better decisions. So what about thinking about the consequences of danger? Some of the things we consider there, Graham, is whether or not we have danger from below, such as dropping into uh, a creek or a gully that you see over here, or whether or not there's danger from above, which could be uh, more avalanche slopes above you. So how do you move yourself or your group safely across the dangerous avalanche terrain? Well, as a group, what you want to do is first see if you have an option to move around it instead of through it. If you have to move through it, establish a safe way to exit it, usually to a high point. It's really important that you move through one at a time, that you watch each other, you don't stop, you have a recognized escape plan of the path that you're on, and then the escape plan is off into a high point. Make sure everyone knows of that. Have an established signal that you can yell to one another to let them know if there's a problem. And finally, don't stop. So Peter, how important are communications in keeping the group safe? Well, Graham, not only are they helpful for avalanche safety, I can tell you where avalanche terrain is, where it isn't, give you a safe line through it, and also find you the best skiing. OK, see you down there. <laughs> Finally, always be aware of other groups in your area. They may not have the same experience as you and could put you at risk. Avalanches do happen, although good education and planning can help avoid them. In the next video, we'll look at what happens if things go wrong.